Can adults develop scoliosis? Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways bending curvature that also has rotation, and the rotation is into the concavity of the scoliosis. This spinal scoliosis, in most cases, are diagnosed as something called idiopathic scoliosis. And idiopathic scoliosis means no known cause. These are normal, healthy people, and for some, for some unknown reason, they're developing a curvature in the spine. Approximately 80% of known cases of scoliosis are idiopathic. The remaining 20% are associated with causations, and these are other types of scoliosis that we'll review in a minute. The other types of scoliosis that are not idiopathic is something that we call neuromuscular scoliosis, congenital scoliosis, and degenerative scoliosis. Now, neuromuscular scoliosis develops due to a larger neuromuscular condition that's occurring in the body, and this normally disrupts the brain, the muscles, or the connective tissue in a negative way. Things like cerebral palsy, Marfan syndrome, neurofibromatosis, these are types of neuromuscular conditions that normally need contractures or fibrosis within the ligaments, muscles, or nerves, and that can lead to a scoliosis happening. In addition, something negative could happen to the nerve system in, in a negative way that can cause like a, like a searings or artery cry syndrome that can lead to a scoliosis developing as well. Congenital scoliosis is normally scoliosis that actually you're born with. And it normally happens because one of the bones in the spine is malformed in utero. And you're born with a misshapen bone, typically called a hemivertebra. And this hemivertebra will be called as like a half vertebra, it's shaped like a triangle as opposed to a rectangle. And that can lead to a curvature developing in that part of the body. The last type is degenerative scoliosis. And this is caused by age-related spinal degeneration. Now, some people will say this is just happening because the person is just aging. But when you look at degenerative scoliosis, it's abnormal degeneration excessively in that area, which will review exactly how that occurs. Now, when we look at who develops scoliosis, we know scoliosis affects all ages, and it can develop really at any age. Babies can be born with scoliosis, like congenital scoliosis, when that's called infantile scoliosis. It can happen in juvenile age as patients are growing and they're juveniles, and this is called juvenile scoliosis. The most common age scoliosis is diagnosed in is adolescence because kids are going through rapid growth, and as they grow, the curve can work and worsen with them so they can get caught at that time. And then adult scoliosis is patients that, ha that get diagnosed with scoliosis once they reach skeletal maturity. Now, the two most common types of scoliosis that affect adult cases or are diagnosed in adults are something called idiopathic scoliosis and degenerative scoliosis. Now, idiopathic scoliosis develops in adults in the most common way it affects adults is that these are kids that did not get diagnosed and they find the scoliosis in the adult form. So therefore, they're undiagnosed adolescent cases that weren't diagnosed or weren't treated during adolescent stage because they weren't diagnosed. And because the number one reason why children get diagnosed is because of a postural finding. It's what you can see. They normally don't feel it worsening. They don't feel progression. They don't feel pain. So the kids don't feel a lot of pain during adolescent stage stage, nothing brings on the diagnosis if the curve doesn't become big enough to be seen posturally. And then once you reach skeletal maturity, a lot of times these curves continue, can continue to progress in the adult form as a result of gravity over time. And as the curves progress in the adult form because of gravity over time, now the curve becomes compressive and it can lead to pain. And then normally the patient starts to feeling, feeling some muscle pain or back pain or pain radiating to an extremity. And they normally go look for a, di they look for a reason, they get an x-ray and they say, oh, look, you have scoliosis. And they never knew they had it. So Many patients that deal with adult scoliosis did not develop the scoliosis in the adult form. They actually develop it in the adolescent form, and they're experiencing the effects in the adult form. And this really highlights the importance of really screening children early and screening children effectively because many cases do not get diagnosed. In fact, we believe we only catch about 30% of all cases in adolescence. 70% of cases go undiagnosed in the adult form because only 30% of cases progress to significant numbers while patients are growing and developing in adolescence. Now, degenerative scoliosis is the second most common type of scoliosis that affects adults, and this occurs in a much different manner. This normally affects older adults. Typically, we get diagnosed somewhere between 55 or 60 years of age. It's definitely more common in, in females than males, also with idiopathic 
scoliosis is also more common with females than males. And for females, it's more closer to 55. For males, we diagnose it more around 65. Uh, another name for degenerative scoliosis is something called de novo scoliosis because it develops with a, a fresh adult history of scoliosis, no history of the condition during adolescent or younger adults. But this can also be true with idiopathic scoliosis. Sometimes they have no history because they never knew. But when you look at the curve presentation and you look at the x-ray, you can really tell a degenerative scoliosis from an idiopathic scoliosis based upon how much degeneration that's occurring at the curvature. When we look at degenerative scoliosis, we know there's a, an increased amount of degeneration, normally right at the apex of the scoliosis, and, and is normally a result of when degeneration occurs early in life, earlier than it's supposed to, and it sits uncorrected and degenerating for many, many, many years. And normally what happens is something younger in life, like your 20s or 30s, causes the spine to shift. And when it shifts out of alignment, it creates an asymmetrical pressure between the disc, between those two bones. And this asymmetrical pressure will cause this disc to start lose its flexibility, will start to start to generate and start acting in, in a negative way. Remember, discs are really what help pro pro provide the spine its structure, its fle flexibility, it's, it acts like a cushion, like a shock absorber. So when these discs start to degenerate, it starts changing shape and it causes the disc to create like a wedge position and this causes the bones above and below to deteriorate faster. Kind of think like an unaligned car. If a car is not aligned properly, one tire is going to wear out faster than the other. It's not a disease of the tires. It's a disease. It's, it's a, a problem of alignment. And we know as this alignment sits like this for a long period of time, this degeneration can lead to a curvature developing. Lifestyle factors can definitely in influence the rate of degeneration, kind of like excess weight, low activities levels, chronic poor posture, uh, excessive consumption of alcohol, smoking, repetitive heavy lifting, uh, heavy objects incorrectly, straining and injuries can also have a negative effect. So adult scoliosis is actually more common than we think because we have all the patients that were adolescent that didn't get diagnosed that get diagnosed in the adult form. And then we have all the patients that are acquiring scoliosis in the adult form, normally most common due to degenerative scoliosis. So current estimates are close to having 7 million people living with scoliosis in the United States alone. Now, there's also a last type, and this is called traumatic scoliosis. People can have a trauma and instantate a scoliosis very quickly. And these are normally significant traumas like car accidents, falls, and injuries. But by far, the most common types are adolescent scoliosis that are not diagnosed and that they actually get diagnosed in the adult form and, of course, degenerative. Current estimates have close to 7 million people living with scoliosis in the United States alone. Adolescents are most commonly diagnosed with scoliosis. So when most patients think of scoliosis, they think of kids. But the actual rate of scoliosis increases with age, and this is due to degenerative scoliosis affecting adults, and this is all a result of all the adolescents that do not get diagnosed, and we actually find them in the adult form. So the rate of scoliosis in adolescents is estimated to be somewhere around 2 to 4%. 5% is really the high side of what we think gets diagnosed. But however, studies show that in adults, that anywhere between 12 and 20% of patients could have scoliosis, and some studies show rates of scoliosis as high as 68% in adults over age. So what we know is that every decade of life increases the percentage of patients in that decade that actually have scoliosis. So the only way this can be happening is many patients go undiagnosed. So this percentage of only 2 to 4% of adolescents actually having scoliosis is probably incorrect. It's probably a higher percentage. But what you're trying to say is that percentage doesn't become big enough, big enough to become diagnosed and it stays small and it's progressing in the adult form to lead to these problems that patients have to deal with in the adult stage. So the idea of scoliosis is not worsening once you're past adolescent and in the adult form, which a lot of advice is given to ad adults with scoliosis. They say, don't worry about it. Once you're an adult, it's not going to worsen. Is not true. So we know patients can develop scoliosis in the adult form for different reasons. Most common progression as a, uh, of the adolescent case and also degenerative. People can develop scoliosis for many different reasons based upon the condition that's affecting them, either whether it be an idiopathic case, whether it be a degenerative case. And there's some other reasons why even adults can develop scoliosis like traumatic reasons. While many people consider scoliosis to be a childhood condition, we know that's completely false, that the actual rate of scoliosis we know increases with age. So as you become older, you're more likely to have scoliosis and more likely to, to, to develop scoliosis. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.